Hey everyone, Blaze here. Welcome to a Animago and Discotech Oticon panel roundup video, <laughs> which is kind of pointless in many ways because at least with the Discotech panel these days, they do them on YouTube. They're archived now as a result. They're not you know they're not one and dones on Twitter, not Twitter, Twitch. So uh, yeah, you can actually go and watch the Discotech Oticon panel. Which, if you've not done for some reason, which I'm sure you have, but if for some reason you haven't, and you accidentally landed on my video as opposed to that video, if that's what you were looking for, I don't know, ping comment, there's a link to the Discotech Oticon panel, go and watch it. But um, for everyone else, I just figured it'd be a nice time to have a little chat about everything that was announced. I'm not going to go too crazy in depth like I did before in the past, because there's no need to, it's archived, you want to know, the info is out there, you can go and watch it. But um so I just kind of want to cover it because obviously it's kind of my thing <laughs> collecting like discotheque stuff and retro anime and talking about it kind of my thing uh, with all that said though about discotheque we're actually going to start with Animago so Justin Savakis of uh, Media OCD who work primarily on discotheque Blu-rays as the Blu-ray authoring team and etc um, he bought Justin a former founder, or actually actual founder of Anime News Network, although sold it in the past. Um, yeah, he bought uh, Animago from Robert Woodhead, the original creator of Animago, the oldest uh, anime company in the West, if you will, in terms of like they're the ones that first put out, or first licensed and released and marketed, really, this is the important part, anime as anime, as Japanese animation. And they've been around the longest of all the companies that still currently exist by a long way. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Justin bought the label, uh, Animago, to keep it going. And Robert Woodhead will eventually retire after a couple of more Kickstarter releases. Um, and basically, it's really exciting because now we've got a much smaller, but we've got yet another player in the retro anime space. And... Uh, he held the first <laughs> Animego, new Animego panel at Oricon. And uh, because like everything's done in like the discotheque mold, while we didn't get the actual like video thing or anything, which I wouldn't have expected, we did get the whole like slideshow thing on Twitter. So yeah, and he announced uh, two new licenses, although one we kind of already knew about. Uh, but no, no, yeah, two new licenses and then, yeah, it was two actually <laughs> scratch that it was too i was thinking bubblegum crash was one of the two new ones but it wasn't actually now i think about it so yeah two new licenses plus bubblegum crash so yeah uh should we just go over what they announced um with anime go first uh obviously the first thing they covered just quickly is like re-releases of old old <laughs> kickstarter releases that um obviously robert woodhead uh, did for animego I've been supporting them, so yeah, like we're getting a new release of Riding Bean. I'll put up like the slideshow stuff here and uh, stuff in editing, but yeah, a new release of Riding Bean, which um, I've double dipped on all of these. I wasn't gonna, but Riding Bean, the new version, is getting a uh, new feature, like an interview with Kenichi Sonoda, the character design and creator of Riding Bean. Um, I really like Kenichi Sonoda's designs and stories and stuff, so yeah, uh, I decided to double dip on that because it wasn't too expensive. I got it from the Media OCD store, uh, which is highly recommended. I'll probably put a link to that in the description as well because that's the only way you can get the slip covers. And the new Anime Go releases are coming with slip covers, but you have to pre order it. Or not, I don't think you have to pre order it, you just you have to order from their web store. Uh, the general release that will go on Amazon and Crunchyroll and things like that uh, won't be coming with a slipcover. So if you want the slipcover, go to Media OCD, link in the description. Um, cool thing about that, actually, you know, I'm in the UK, so I thought I'd just say this, that Media OCD do provide, like, shipping to the UK. Um, I'm pretty sure you pay the taxes up front. I guess I'll find out pretty soon, but it seemed that that was the case. So, yeah, you have to pay the import charges up front, but... Uh, which is actually more convenient, frankly. Um, so yeah, it's kind of expensive, but um, I've decided to do it. So yeah, I got the Riding Beam, which they're doing a new release of. In fact, that just that just shipped yesterday, so that'll be coming pretty soon. I think the release date for that is for, is for September. Um, 
and then uh, they're also doing a new release of Otaku new video. So they're basically, um, they're just new, um, oh, how do they put it? <laughs> just reauthored discs, like fixing up any like errors, like go, you know, doing a comb through the video to make sure it looks as good as it possibly can. Things like that. You know, Justin's like an absolute pro. Not to say that Robert Woodhead and all that weren't. Um, because they are, they've been around for ages, and Robert Woodhead is a very clever man, <laughs> you know, creator of, like, the Wizardry uh, franchise on uh, computers back in the day and things, you know, he knows his stuff, technical-wise, technical but, um, anyway, uh, yeah, so, in the case of the talking the video, there is actually no reason, really, to double dip on it, um, I've just kind of decided to do it just to support Animago in the early days, it does come with a slipcover that is of the um uh is there an easy way to show this <laughs> uh, well, not really but like the the bunny girl sort of thing like the slip cover has that traditional design basically what the dvd used to be for a talking video uh, which they didn't do for the kickstarter blu-ray i mean it's on there in, in a poster i believe but um yeah let's put this patch back but yeah but there's no reason actually to um double dip on a Takuno video other than I just felt like it. It actually comes with less extras like the commentary uh, tracks on here from the crew who made it as well as the English commentary. Um, things like that aren't included on the new release so it's worth keeping hold of this version if you you know decide that you, you're quite happy with just the standard edition. You will lose out on the extras that are on this uh, release if you decide to get rid of it. Anyway yeah so Takuno video I decided to double dip on as well. And then obviously they're doing another release of Megazone 2 Free, which will be the second standard release of the trilogy, because they did a, uh, a smaller one a little while ago, but that's now gone out of print, and they're doing it again. And uh, this time, for the first time, uh, they're including the Manga UK dub for part three of Megazone, which was not included on this release. So <laughs> uh, for me, that was like, okay, I guess I'm gonna be buying that as well. That's kind of what sent me over the edge to get a talking new video, because I was like, I got Riding Bean, just in a spur in the, mo spur in the moment thing, you know, the first kind of new Animego release, I guess. And it had the new Kenichi Snowder interview, so I double dipped. And then I pre-ordered uh, the uh, Megazone 2 Free Trilogy release, because it uh, was coming with that new dub. And at some point, I was just looking at a talking new video. I was like, sorry, I'll get a talking new video as well. <laughs> I don't know why. I just did. It was a weak moment. Oh, also, uh, if you have the original Kickstarter releases of these, you can... Um, I didn't do it for Riding Bean because I think I'd already ordered it and then they offered it afterwards. And I was just like, oh, whatever. But with these, if you, you can actually get a 50% voucher, I think it is, off you know, the new releases, if you've got these. They don't obviously require you to send these to them or anything. You basically just take a photo of these. There's the whole thing on the website. If I can find the link, I'll pin that in the comment as well in case you want to do that. But yeah, if you have these releases, you can get the new version at 50% off um, so long as you buy it straight from them, from their store. So I did that for both of these, so they were a lot cheaper, which obviously made the double dipping easier. Anyway, so that's all the stuff we knew that they were doing. Uh, so we got the new stuff. So uh, the first new thing they announced for Animego was a uh, Time of Eve, um, which is really cool. Uh, Time of Eve is a relatively modern OVA <laughs> by the standards that we'll be covering today. Um, yeah, it's an OVA from I can't remember like about two thousand eight, two thousand six sort of range, and um, it's actually had a couple releases already, of which I have both. But uh, it's really cool that we're getting this new release. I'll probably get it, I guess. I really don't need to. I have the original OVA release here. So this was a Kickstarter, I believe. Like a Kickstarter release, or maybe the next one. I can't remember. This might have been a campaign on a website, actually. Uh, so this is put out by Pi Piper. They did Time of Eve and Skip Beat, and then disappeared. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I believe this was actually a campaign of sorts but yeah this is the original six episode OVA version uh only subtitled into English there's no dub um but yeah uh, it's basically about this little bar uh this is a world where you have um robots and humans uh living in the um uh you know <laughs> together basically although the robots are basically sort of 
servants of sorts uh, to the humans, like, basically. And there's a bar that you can go to, Time of Eve, I think is what the bar is called, where you go in and, like, you can basically... You go in there and no one is allowed to point out to to um, anyone if a robot is a robot. The robots can basically come there and be, for all intents and purposes, human, I guess, to some degree. Um, it's all, you're just not allowed to, you go there under the, under the impression that, you know, these aren't servants, these are just other beings that you're interacting with. And it kind of gets into the whole, like, <laughs> dynamics of that, and what it means to be human, what it means to, you know, perhaps not be, and all these sort of things and what really matters. And, um, yeah, it's a really beautiful story, like, really good modern sci-fi story. I really, really, really enjoyed it. It gets pretty emotional at times. Um, it's also quite funny at times. Um, each episode is about 15 minutes long. And yeah, I've had this for ages. It came out a while ago. It's kind of a weird release where, I mean, I've chosen this cover because it's one of my favourite characters. But um, it actually comes with like a, a different um, like insert cover for all the characters <laughs> that are included. You can pick whatever one you want. Obviously, I went with the um, robot, uh, the most obvious robot anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll put that back together later because it's a bit complicated. But, yeah, Time of Eve was great. That's what That was the original OVA. And then we got the movie cut, which I don't know if they went through and touched up, like, anything from the OVA. They must have done, but it's basically just the OVA presented as a movie. And uh, that makes more sense because, like, the OVA really does kind of feel a little bit cut up for no reason other than you know that was just how they did it back in the day but like the movie is fine as a you know it's fine as a movie and this time they dubbed it so this is the dubbed version i won't go into all of it i guess because i've kind of covered it all but yeah basically anime going to be doing a release <coughs> that basically combines the two you'll get the ova you'll get the movie you'll get the dub all in one set much more compact than these ones were but um yeah Time of Eve is great. You should definitely pick this up if you haven't got this release. Um, I will be doing that probably, even though that. But I won't. I kind of don't want to get rid of these, so it'll be kind of ridiculous at the same time. But I might get it. I probably will <laughs> at the moment. At the moment, I kind of have it in my mind that I might just collect all things Animego um, because I imagine most of what they're going to put out is stuff I'm interested in, so I might just keep going and, like, this new anime go, just picking them up. But we'll see how that actually goes long term. It might become ridiculous at some point. So, anyway, so that was Time of Eve. Then they're doing a Bubblegum Crash, which was announced prior. Um, so here's my Bubblegum collection, if you will. So we've got Bubblegum Crisis, which I imagine will get a, um, new release. This is the, uh... Uh, this is the original Animego Kickstarter release, obviously, way back when. I think this is nearly 10 years old now or something insane. I can't remember when they did it. Maybe it wasn't 2014. It felt like a, it feels like a lifetime ago. But, <laughs> yeah, so this goes for quite a pretty penny these days. So yeah, the Bubblegum Crisis Ultimate Edition. Anyway, I assume, that, I mean, this has had one new release already, like a compact release uh, from Animego. Uh, Justin worked on it, but yeah, at least I think he did. Um, but that all came on like one disc. I assume they'll do a new release of this in the future, uh, relatively soon, which again, I'll probably get, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, even though I don't need it. Uh, I'll probably double dip on that. Um, anyway, and then we got Bubblegum Crash and Bubblegum Crisis Tokyo 2040, which I've not watched yet. Um, I tried watching, actually I watched the first two episodes and I really wasn't into it. Um, I'll have to try again, but I didn't really like the new 90s <laughs> version of it. But anyway, yeah, so Bubblegum Crash is a free episode OVA sequel to Bubblegum Crisis. Uh, Bubblegum Crisis obviously is eight episodes and was originally meant to be, mo meant to be more, but was cancelled. Um, but eventually it came back uh, a few years later with these three new episodes. And we're getting these on Blu-ray now, sort of. I mean, we are. Um, unfortunately, uh, apparently the film negatives only exist for episode two, I think it is, or at least one of the episodes, I can't remember which one it was specifically. So the other two episodes are going to be upscaled using Astro Res, so they'll look reasonably good. 
Uh, this will be the first time, I think, where Asteris has been used for, uh, on Cell anime from, you know, Discotheque or Animego, um, to this extent, where they're going to present literally two-thirds of this Astro res um, you know, entire episodes. I know they've used it on Cell anime, every, like, here and there, like, some of the Project Aiko, um, Special features have Astro Res uh, up res stuff, and then I know they did it on Memories, and probably hit a couple of other places here and there that I'm forgetting about. But I think this is like the most it's going to have been used. So I'm quite, quite kind of curious about how it's going to look. Obviously, I will get it regardless because I want to collect Animego stuff, and also one of the episodes is going to be from the film Negative, so it should look amazing. So yeah. Um, Bubblegum Crash coming to Blu-ray, which is really cool. And then finally, uh, we're getting uh, something that I know a lot of people freaked out about, and I kind of referenced that on my Twitter or whatever, that I know that this will make a lot of people happy. Um, I was quite surprised by it. It's not a show that I've ever like earmarked as something like that I desperately want or anything, but it's cool that it's finally coming out complete. So that's a Full Moon Woe... <laughs> full Moon? That's not how you would say it in Japanese. But it's basically Full Moon, W-O, and then Saga, Saga Shite? Saga Shite? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that. Uh, which is a 2002, I believe, a Studio Dean kind of magical girl, idol, shoujo, romance, drama show. It's like 52 episodes, but that's the surprising bit for me. Like, this is basically anime go like when i saw time of eve come up because that came up first in terms of announcements i was like yeah that's kind of like the ballpark of stuff i would expect anime to pick up like i didn't flip out on time of eve i was kind of like oh that's cool and because you know i already owned it twice <laughs> but it was sort of like that's really cool i can totally see why they would pick that up and it's cool that people will be able to get it because i'm pretty sure those other releases i showed you a long long outprint but um yeah, uh, I wouldn't have expected basically the second announcement to then be, oh, here's a 52-episode show. Like, I think across Animego's entire history, obviously they did Kimiguri Orange Road, which is actually less episodes, although if you had the OVAs and whatever, it's actually longer than 52. But yeah, like they did Kimiguri Orange Road and they did Urusei Atsura, obviously, which is a huge mammoth task. But other than that, in terms of TV shows, like... I mean, that's kind of basically it. I can't think of other TV shows they did. I'm sure they did. But nothing spring into mind. So, like, for the new Animego, for their second license to be a 52-episode series, and one that loads of people have coveted and really wanted, um, I thought was kind of cool and, like, kind of changed my expectations going forward. Like, I thought for the first little while, we, we like, I expected you know, movies and OVAs and maybe like a 12 episode TV series, nothing crazy because a lot of licenses I'm pretty sure are bundled up in terms of cost by how many episodes they are as well. Like, uh, like the longer the show, the more expensive it is to license, you know, relatively. I mean, this is an old show, so that might, you know, that can probably make, you know, would mean the price is cheaper maybe. I don't know, it depends. I don't really know anything, so <laughs> we'll skip over that part, I guess. But, um, you know, just you, know, you would expect a show like that to cost more. I, I don't know, I just didn't expect it. Didn't expect something to be 52 episodes uh, so soon. Like, that's kind of cool. It's also coming to Blu-ray. Like, that's how they said it, not standard definition Blu-ray. Like, HD Blu-ray. Now, this is an old show. Um, the, the opening, the clean opening, or whatever it was they showed on Twitter... Uh, looked pretty good for what it is, so um, I, t I just realised how long this freaking video is. So I guess we'll be splitting these into two parts: <laughs> Anime Go and then Disco Tech. Because holy crap, I can talk up a storm apparently. Christ. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, cool thing about this show was that it originally was trying Viz tried to put it out back in the day, and then just gave up, as Viz is one to do, especially back then. Um, so yeah, I can't remember how many volumes it got, but um, I think it only got like half the show out or something, possibly even less. Um, but yeah, uh, so it originally came out on volumes on DVD and they just never finished it. There is a dub, I don't think the dub is finished. There was no um, word on whether the dub, or you know, whether it's complete or not, uh, was, will be included, I'm pretty sure. I don't think they mentioned that. 
So we have to wait and see on that. I, I would imagine that the dub might be complicated, although the way that Animego have been doing things so far, this new Animego, Justin's Animego, like they seem to be going out of their way to try and get everything they can. So if it's available, I'm sure it will be included in some form. But um, yeah, anyway, very, very cool. So yeah, that was Animego. I guess, like I said, I guess we'll be splitting this up into two videos because I can't believe I talked about Animego for 20 minutes. I think, I just thought, I didn't think I'd have that much to say. <laughs> but I guess I somehow did. So yeah, that was the Animego panel. Um, cool. I really look forward to whatever they've got coming uh, later. Uh, it's going to be slow and steady with Animego. I think, like Justin uh, said in previous like live streams, that their goal is basically to do one a month, one release a month, like starting like next year, basically. Um, uh, I don't know how realistic that will be. We'll wait and see, I guess. But like, it's just cool to have another company in the game, you know, uh, especially one that's focused primarily on retro stuff. I mean, he said that's primarily what they're going to be doing, like retro cell animated stuff, and then with the modern stuff. It's going to be pretty much stuff before 2010, I think he mentioned. And it will be, like, stuff of... Stuff that's revered, you know, not too much stuff that's going to be in, like, the scraping the bottom of the barrel sort of, you know, well, we're putting this out because it's a cheap license. Like, he wanted to make sure that it kind of... Um, yeah, everything they put out had some merit to it. I mean, most things do, I guess. But you know what I mean? Just something a bit more classy. I don't know. <laughs> So whatever, I'm going to start talking about Animego because the video is now 22 minutes long, which is fucking mental. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm in Blaze. We're going to be talking about Disco Tech in the next video. So yeah, I'm in Blaze. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.